Morning everyone, thought I'd do a little uh, little over a year update here now that I've owned the Rusi here in the Philippines. Uh, what's my thoughts on it? I thought I'd share a little bit. Let me uh, check the mileage. I wanted to mention that as well. So see if I can see that there. Yeah, about, about 2,000 kilometers on it. So a little over a year, 2,000 kilometers. Uh, about 75% of my ridings, uh, you know, roads like this, kind of rough road, uh, country, province road and some trail and probably 40-50% uh, uh, the rest on the street. So that's kind of my th thing and come from America, had uh, KTMs, uh, Kawasaki Hondas, all the big brands. So, uh, so what's my thoughts on the Rusi? Uh, KRY 200 here in the Philippines after a year. Um, well, to sum it up, uh, the quick answer, so to cut to the chase is, do I think it's worth the $1,400 roughly that I paid for it, 70,000 pesos here in the Philippines. So complete bike, uh, one year, 2,000 kilometers, uh, what do I think of it for $1,400? I think it's a terrific bike. Uh, nothing has, the only thing that's broke was the ignition switch. Uh, everything else I've done, uh, all the mods and adding all the money that I did put into it, because I put another, another 70,000 pesos in it, were not, uh, you know, really necessary as far as if you wanted a bike to ride and get to point A to point B. Now to make it uh, a better bike, you know, competitive, uh, more on par with the, uh, you know, Hondas and Kawasaki's, the uh, 200s and the 250s and the 300 even. Then the mods I've done, they've been, uh, you know, more necessary. But, uh, you know, like I said, the bike does get you to point A to point B. And even now that I've got maybe uh, 3,000 dollars 150,000 pesos or 140,000 pesos roughly in it um, with all the things I've tried back and forth and most of that's just been trying to make it better I'm American got a few bucks I like playing with bikes I do the same you know people say get a Honda get a KTM I've had them I do the same thing with that I uh, put new grips on it new bark busters different tires so I get done with the Honda, it's now a ten, fifteen thousand dollar bike, and I get done with the KTM and it's uh now a ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollar bike. So three thousand total in it, uh with all the different mods. You can watch some of the other videos, but now we're talking about some of the mods that I think were uh necessary to bring it up to a uh more performance oriented bike. I, li I really like the 21, you know, 18 or the bigger wheels. I'm still experimenting with that. I'm uh, gonna go with a 21, 21, did an 18, 18. Just playing around with that with rollability and, you know, handling and just, you know, having fun with it. So uh, I start off, I think the bead locks are fantastic. So if you've never had bead locks, they, uh, lock your tire that's one right there locks your tire onto the uh, rim so you can run low pressure and low pressure in my opinion is 5 psi to 15 psi so if you're running them pressures and you don't have rim locks you're very likely to rip your valve stem off and flat you know have a flat and with rim locks if you do get a flat you can still ride back to the uh, vehicle or back to your home or back to town for repairs if you want because the tire isn't going to fall off the uh, rim and you're not going to you'll be able to still propel yourself especially on the rear because uh, if you go without rim locks and you have a flat and you start to give it gas well it's just going to spin the rim able to go and the tire will probably jam up so that's been a big benefit so I got two rim locks on each wheel the rear and front if you have any questions on what my setup is I'll go more into it I've talked about most things 
The other thing, I think the bike is oversprung, surprisingly, because most of the uh, Japanese bikes are undersprung. I'm about 90, 95 kilos here. So I think that's around a couple hundred pounds, uh, hopefully, because that's about where I am. I fluctuate between 180 and 200. So I thought that was a, a strange thing for me. So I spent the last year adjusting. I got a different shock with a one inch stroke, longer stroke. So it gives you one more inch of travel. I took that off because I thought it threw the geometry out too much. Put the stock one on. What you people don't realize is uh, that you want a little give here when a little static sag, not much, just a slight bit of float because uh, you don't want the bike uh, kicking you off the seat when you go over bumps and stuff. In the front, I put three inch extenders in it. So they set in your fork here, you take your top cap off and loosen up the uh, top pinch bolts to your steering here. And then you can uh, put extenders in. I think uh, uh, Richard over in Mindanao is making, or somebody's making them for him. I think he's selling them for a thousand pesos, about $300 shipping around the Philippines, to, or 300 pesos to ship, so about 1,300 pesos. But I got them from him. That really improved the front end. Now, if you're a short rider, the 2118 may not be for you. I do think it makes the ride better. Uh, smoother and more stable but if you're a typical Philippine person over here and you're you know five five foot or five seven then uh, you may struggle with that setup and same with the fork extenders I think it made a huge difference uh, gives you three more inches of uh, float on the front end so it really smooths out the bumps you don't have the top out of the fork caps so if your bike your Rusi KRY you go down the road here and you hit these bumps and it's rattling. That's because the fork's topping out and it's overly sprung and it doesn't have room to float at the top. So these three inch extenders gives it that room. So it really smooths it out. That being said, I still think it's oversprung, but it's much better. Um, so that was a big improvement. Also, uh, a lot of people are unaware of uh, how to set up a, your bearings and your steering in the front. So again, there are, your bearings are located in the headset here, here, up here, and then down there. Put your bike in a stand or up on a bucket or something, and if you turn your handlebar and it slaps, uh, you know, bumps real hard against the steering stops, which are them things there with a the hole in it where I took out the bolts so I could get a, a more a greater range of steering. Um, then it's too loose. So if it's too loose, uh, you don't have enough dampening in your bearings because you, uh, on motorcycles off road, they're supposed to, you're supposed to have it tight enough that uh, kind of just barely uh, it doesn't slap the steering stops. It kind of, it's hard to say. I'll have to demo it someday. I'll get somebody to film me and we'll, you know, do that. But you want the handlebars a little stiffer where it's, it has some resistance in turning. So not too much to where, you, you know, you just barely push on it and it shouldn't just, you know, turn and hit the stops real hard and bounce. So to set that up, you, uh, Loosen this up. You loosen up the two bolts over here on your uh, steering clamp, top steering clamp. Loosen them two up. Loosen this up. Then underneath the locking ring, and you turn that, and then you keep tapping your handlebars, move them back and forth to see if there's a, a friction in it. As soon as it starts to get some friction, you're pretty good. Then you tighten this up to see. Uh, because sometimes when you tighten this up, it adds too much to the tension of the bearings. I think they're roller bearings. So if it becomes too great and it's really rigid to turn, you know, hard to uh, steer, then you've went a little too far. So then you back that off, 
loosen this up a little bit and retighten this down. Hey, and check out uh, where you're at. So there's other videos on YouTube that uh, demo that. So I have a hard time doing stuff because I'm by myself and nobody to film and I don't have a lot of my tools here in the Philippines. So I don't wrench uh, so much, but I still have, uh, have done it and understand how to do these things. So, so that was a big improvement too. So lots of little things and, uh, but yeah, that was, uh, and the battery, uh, going to a lithium battery, knocking off about four or five pounds of weight off the top of the bike was a big improvement. I have a video on showing, showing that one day. So, but, uh, yeah, I put a hydraulic brake on it. So, but now after a year of ownership, 2000 kilometers, roughly, uh, $1,400 bike. I think it's a heck of a bike, a heck, uh, of a, a deal. Um, cause all my life I spent, you know, six, eight, 10, 12, $15,000 on, you know, motorcycles, which is a half million to almost a million pesos here in the Philippines. So, so, and, you know, coming from that to this and for the money, that's what you got to keep in mind. Uh, a lot of people in a KTM or Honda, you go out and buy a, a rear shock, a high dollar rear shock. Well, that's uh, easily a thousand to three thousand dollars, depends on how fancy you get. I said, here you're getting a complete bike. Now, the shocks aren't even really comparable uh, to, to anything like that. But uh, again, you know, the purpose of the bike and the cost of the bike, it, you know, I still mowed up the road very decently and uh, eats up the bumps okay now. So, you know, I'm very satisfied with it for, for the money. Now, if you told if I bought this bike and it was a ten thousand dollar bike, I'd tell you the suspension's terrible. But with the mods that I did, and uh, for fourteen hundred or even three grand, I think it's a it's become a decent bike. So, I'm personally I'm very happy with it, and again, it's for the money. So, a lot of uh, you know KTM, like I said, rear shock would uh, be the cost of the whole bike here or even a fork set up more than the cost of it so so for what you get that it works the brakes work decently um you know they they stop they're predictable uh the engine seems very uh xr 200 ish like very uh kind of the torquey and uh you know, dependable, and so it's been good. So I've talked to many people, they're getting uh, four, five, six, eight years out of them or more. I see some bikes running around 10 years old here. So I think it's a great bike for the money. It depends what you're used to and what you're gonna do. If you bought it and you think, oh, I just bought me a KTM for $1,400. Well, I think then you may be very disappointed. So, but, my opinion, it's a decent little bike. So, uh, is anything that, you know, it's got some, everything on is kind of, you know, cheap. The stickers are thin and cheap and, you know, break and pill away easily. And that's mine after a year of the, those. So, I, so it's got a few scratches, but overall it's, uh, some of them's peeled off, but pretty decent. So I think, uh, the biggest thing I like about it's the price and the, uh, gets the job done and I think it's a pretty stylish looking bike. Uh, you don't, this is what it, you know, basically looks like from the uh, factory. I didn't put these stickers on it. I didn't, uh, no, no aftermarket plastic, uh, the shape of the fenders and tail light. It's LED tail light. It's LED uh, now headlight, which I did. It comes with halogen. So I got a 45,000 lumen uh, headlight, 12 LED, LED turn signals. So uh, got a L, uh, LED readout. So uh, tells your uh, RPM and I think gear selection. I think it may have a gas light or gas uh, gauge or meter on it as well, which is pretty neat. Again, $1,400. So uh, very, uh, very decent price so 
All right, if you got any questions or anything, let me know. Uh, like to always hear back, tell me about your setup of the your Rusi or any bike you have. So I like uh, talking about bikes and sharing information and uh, if I can help somebody or somebody can assist me with some stuff. So I just uh, enjoy uh, sharing, you know, what I know or have done and learning about other things and what people are doing here. So I think I'm uh, somewhat almost done with it. Um, I think my next step, if I would just do anything, just buy a newer bike when they come out with a 250 or uh, six speed or some improvements that I'd be looking for. So I think I've taken this one about as far as it needs to go or uh, so I don't think it adds much more value or performance if I spend much more on it but I think I've now taken it and it's uh, it's to a place where uh, if I uh, went out and bought it today and it was set up like the way I've got it set up I think uh, it's a great little bike so I think they sell like hotcakes stock they're not so you know good the suspension I think is the big weak uh, weak point oversprung uh, top and out bouncy so but it can be fixed uh, relatively cheap like I said the uh, extension was thousand pesos about 20 bucks just uh, backing off the lock rings on the rear shock and softening that up so there's a little float at the top when it's setting there just a little bit uh, you know quarter inch or I've tried as much as an inch inch and a half but that's a little too much so you know as you ride and get experience if you got what I'd like to do is hit a water bar bump or a parking uh, you know, bump in the, in the city somewhere. And if the both ends feel similar when I'm sitting down or standing up, you know, one's not kicking me off the, up the front or out the back and they both feel similar, then I know I've got a pretty decent setup. Or if they're both very harsh, then I soften them up until they both eat up the bump better. So, so that's the way I do, you know, do my bike setups is I work with what I got, whether I've got dampening or rebound, which these do not have either. So you'd have to modify like the holes or uh, uh, rods or change the fluid in them, which I've done. But uh, so that's it. Oh, it's gotten long on me, the video. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll cut it off here. Thank you.